Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here this afternoon. Um, not a lot of you know me. This is my first time through this process. Some of you know me uh, rather well. Um, uh, some of you I had the uh, opportunity to speak with uh, individually in advance of this, and I want to thank each of you for that opportunity. Um, so I'd start off by giving a, beef, a brief background about myself. I am uh, born and raised here in Des Moines. Uh, I grew up in the Drake neighborhood. Uh, both of my parents were uh, reporters and editors for the uh, Des Moines Register. Uh, my dad was an investigative reporter for about 40 years before retiring. My mom worked there as a, a copy editor for about 15 before she went uh, freelance uh, doing copy editing and uh, uh, fact checking for uh, various magazines, a lot, a lot of them with the Emeritus Corporation. So from an early age, I was taught the importance of being able to find and develop the facts in a way that anyone picking it up off the street could understand. I went to Roosevelt, uh, Roosevelt High School and uh, Central Academy. I now uh, work across the street from my old school, uh, just off of uh, Grand. Um, I went to uh, Knox College in Galesburg, Illinois, uh, where I earned an undergrad in creative writing. During that time, I worked my way through school doing work study in the facility services office, the cafeteria dish room before uh, getting a job at the local uh, art supply warehouse uh, where I worked uh, 20 to 25 hours a week uh, uh, filling uh, or shipments. Uh, from there, I, uh, you see uh, my application, my work history uh, passed that. I ultimately ended up at the University of Iowa Law School having decided on my uh, second go around working uh, retail uh, during a Christmas rush that uh, law school had to be better than that. Um, and I think ultimately, uh, at least, at the very least, my back has uh, agreed with me on that decision. Um, from there, I started clerking after the end of my first, uh, my first year uh, for Commissioner Parrish. Uh, he was kind enough to keep me on for three years as a clerk and then as an associate for just shy of another 10. Uh, in July of 2020, uh, me and several other attorneys I'd been working with made the decision to start a law firm in the middle of the pandemic. Whether that was uh, the right call or not, uh, still remains to be seen, though we have had uh, successful four years. In that time, I have not only uh, furthered my work as a legal professional, but I've also learned how to run a small business uh, as somebody had to be responsible for taking over the administrative side of things of a startup law firm, uh, which was responsibilities I took on myself. Uh, in addition to uh, my legal work, I am responsible for making sure that payroll gets run, that the lights stay on, and that all bills get paid. Um, and from that, I will uh, open myself up to any questions anyone may have. All right, we'll start questioning with Commissioner Piglet. I have no questions, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Stanger. She threw us off, because we I, kind of I did. It. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was keeping thank you guys you. on your toes. That's right. <laughs> thank, you. thank you for your application. Thanks for being here today. Um, I wonder if you could share with the commission um, how you might enhance the collegiality of the Court of Appeals. Yes. It is a uh, very small group, nine judges obviously, uh, doing very intense work. So I can assume, only assume that uh, sometimes uh, emotions and tensions can run a little bit high. Um, in my private practice, uh, as particularly in the type of cases that I, typ that I typically work on, um, I am generally working with the same seven opposing counsels uh, over the course of all my cases. If I hadn't figured out a way to work well with them uh, in, in, in proceeding with the cases, uh, despite the many issues that arise in, these th in, in those cases, um, I, would never have got, I would never get anything done. So I like to think that I have a good reputation with my opposing counsels uh, working with them, uh, even when things can get, get contentious. Um, so I believe that when you're dealing with issues of what the law is, what the law means, how it applies to uh, the facts at hand, uh, there is room for uh, vigorous and thorough debate, but 
there's, but it's always going to be professional. And we are all working towards reaching the right, uh, the, the right answer in any individual case. And hopefully that uh, the, de the debate uh, gets us there. And ultimately, uh, there's an old saying that uh, uh, iron sharpens iron, steel sharpens steel. So you're going to be working with some very good uh, legal minds, and you're all trying to get to the same to the same uh, answer in the end. Thank you. Okay, we're going to write this ship here. I'll go back to Commissioner Chase. <laughs> <laughs> now you're really mixing it up. <laughs> That's right. Uh, thank you for your application. Um, how does your experience as a private practice attorney prepare you for the Court of Appeals, and how do you address any thoughts that you're skipping a step, so to speak? Um, going right from being a practice attor practicing attorney to the Court of Appeals? I think that uh, my experience as a private attorney gives me uh, some insight into the uh, practical realities uh, of the cases that are going to be appearing before us on the Court of Appeals bench. Since I started as a clerk, um, I have worked in a wide variety of cases. My, in the last four years, has been fairly specialized, focusing on a lot of uh, uh, civil rights cases, uh, personal injury, wrongful death. But over the course of my uh, time in practice, I have done uh, cases, multiple uh, administrative cases in front of various boards. I have been involved in uh, some family law, some juvenile uh, employment law cases. So I have a wide background uh, of knowledge, uh, some of it several years old at this point, but a wide background on a variety of issues that could have arise. And having uh, worked uh, with, uh, as I indicated, with uh, uh, flesh and blood clients, uh, I think that gives me some insight into uh, the practical impact of the decisions that we make and while that uh, and while that cannot control the ultimate outcome of a case I think it's important to understand the to understand the practical impact of a decision as that as it is in the analysis that's going to go forward and live beyond the decision in any single case Commissioner Boyer thank you mr. Witowski for your application uh, I have a question here. I have a note on your trained mediator. Um, just wanting to know a little more about that and how you think that could assist the courts. Yeah. Uh, in 2021, if I, I believe, I went through the 40-hour uh, training, uh, mediator training session that uh, Richard Calkins uh, puts on. Um, and I believe that that training is important, uh, both in, in a practical matter as in the uh, discussion between the uh, judges on the panel uh, trying to reach an ultimate resolution as to the case uh, before us, but also, once again, in understanding uh, what the parties have gone through to get to where they are. Uh, mo pretty much all the appeals that, well, I would not say pretty much all the appeals that would, be that would be coming before us have gone through some type of district court proceeding to get there. Those are very high stress, and not just on the parties, on the lawyers, on the judges making the decisions. Uh, so all of that can influence uh, the, re the ultimate record that is made and needs to be, and it needs to be read in, uh, in that sense, with that, under with that understanding, in order to truly understand how to reach the decision uh, necessary on appeal. Thank you. Commissioner Marquardt. Thank you for your application. Um, so during our one-on-one, -on -one, we talked about how a lot of your experience in private practice has been in the drafting of documents for various litigation. How does your use of the power of the pen in private practice, how is that gonna translate um, to assist you if you are the person selected to fill this spot on the Court of Appeals? Yes, uh, for the past 14 years, basically the entirety of my career, I have uh, worked primarily as uh, a research attorney, uh, putting together motions, pleadings, briefs, uh, things along those lines. And that means I have 14 years of experience in researching complex issues, uh, in presenting those in a way that those 
uh, reading them for the first time can understand, and uh, including not just the law, but the pre presenting of uh, complex facts that you know in a manner that can be easily processed. Um, and I believe that that would translate fairly directly uh, into a, a court of appeals position. Commissioner DeFord. Thank you, Mr. Witoski. I have no questions at this time. Commissioner Parrish. Mr. Witoski, the only, I will pass some questions because if I ask anything within the 10 years you work with me, I might be in a tough situation. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'll pass. <laughs> I'll tell you not to answer any of those questions. <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> Commissioner Graber. Uh, thank you for your application. I have no questions at this time. Commissioner Schnur. Uh, thanks for your application. I um, just wanted to ask you, as you probably know, the Court of Appeals, the judges write about 100 opinions a year. Um, given your experience, um, talk about how you can fit in to that and uh, do it in a collegial manner, as you've already somewhat addressed over here. Yeah. Uh, I'll start off by saying uh, I recognize that based on the writing sample that I submitted, that uh, I'm gonna have to get a whole uh, a whole lot uh, uh, shorter in in the <laughs> ultimate output. Uh, no more 50 page briefs. We're looking at about you know 10 page opinions. Uh, so that's gonna so that's gonna be a curve that uh, I'm gonna have to work on. Um, Beyond that, I, I, my understanding of, of the statistics is between 2019 and 2023, there was an average of, of 1,017 cases uh, that uh, appeared before the Court of Appeals, breaking down to about 120 uh, briefs being directly written by any individual judge with obviously insight uh, and involvement on another 240. Um, to which I'd note that in the past uh, two months, I have put together, I believe, 10, ca 10 briefs in eight different cases, and by the end of July, I'll have uh, five or six more uh, onto that. Um, working to put together a clear document addressing a legal issue as applied to a set of facts uh, is, ha has been the focus of my practice. Uh, almost since the beginning. By the time I was done my first year as a law clerk, uh, I had already drafted a, uh, a brief to the Eighth Circuit. Uh, I'd, I'd had that privilege. Um, so I believe that uh, my background in brief writing would, uh, would assist me in making sure that uh, uh, I'm able to get out the decisions necessary in, a, uh, efficient, uh, in, a, in an efficient manner. Thank you. Commissioner Hansen. Um, thank you so much for your application. Would you please describe your judicial philosophy? My judicial philosophy, I think, would come down to uh, really trying to get it right. And on the Court of Appeals level, if it's been routed to the Court of Appeals, that means that there's likely been a decision by the, by the Iowa Supreme Court that there's enough law out there for it to be addressed by the Court of Appeals. And that means reading what's out there on the issue, uh, seeing as how it's been applied to related factual circumstances, uh, and, reaching, and reaching an answer uh, consistent with the with the existing precedent uh, partic and particularly if it's a, a statutory issue uh, in a matter that is consistent with what the legislature intended and what they put into the law um, so and I would I don't know how much of a philosophy that is but that is uh, the approach that that I would uh, uh, that would foresee uh, should I be appointed thank you Commissioner Roberts. Thanks, Adam. No questions. Commissioner Henderson. No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Semelora. Is there a particular appellate judge whose opinions you find particularly helpful that you would try to emulate on the Court of Appeals? I've found that uh, I've, that uh, Judge Tabor is a appellate judge that I've always respected. 
Um, I've always uh, found her uh, opinions to be uh, insightful uh, and uh, cutting to the and cut to the point to the uh, issues that need to be resolved in order to uh, resolve the case. Um, so, as it, Judge Tabor, um, I did I do appreciate Judge uh, Judge Bowers uh, as well. Um, at one point, several years ago, I had uh, applied to uh, uh, be a clerk to be a clerk for him. Ultimately, did not get that position, but uh, he had uh, uh, emphasized uh, the importance of brevity, identifying the key, the key issue in a case, and addressing only what needed to be addressed uh, to resolve the case. Thank you, Commissioner Hartkoff. I have no questions, thank you. Commissioner Spies. Mr. Potowski, I'm curious about, about uh, what you th think or about how technology might change the work of the Court of Appeals in uh, the years ahead. Well, I can foresee that there'd be a lot, uh, a lot more remote uh, arguments. Um, seeing as there'd be no need to, uh, for presentation of evidence or testimony, anything along those lines that would regularly necessitate uh, in-person proceedings. Uh, I was involved in a few uh, oral arguments uh, during the course of the pandemic that were done over Zoom, and I could foresee that going forward in the future. Um, beyond that, when it comes to researching, I know that uh, a lot of legal research tools have begun to inv involve um, some AI uh, technology into uh, the, the research process, um, and I think that's ultimately gonna be uh, in inevitable uh, in that in in that regard, um, beyond that, I don't know. Uh, those are the two main areas I would see technology influencing uh, how uh, appeals proceed going forward. And I hope you feel reassured that I didn't ask you any of the questions Mr. Parrish was going to ask you. <laughs> 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 Commissioner Hoig. Good questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for your application, and uh, our our time is close to being done. So we will look forward to discussing your application later, and uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you.